All right, so before we begin, let's, let's ask some simple questions. First of all, who are you? <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'm Haley. Haley? Nice to meet you, Haley. I'm Mary. Mary. I'm Jacob. Jacob. Adrian. Very good. How about you? Joshua. Joshua. <coughs> Eric. Eric. Julia. <coughs> Ian. Ian. Yes. Alex. Alex. Aaron. Aaron. Anybody else? Parker. Parker. Kyle. Daniel. Daniel. Anybody else? Matthew. Matthew. Eric. Eric. Shannon. Shannon. All right. So, what grade level are you folks in? Just a what? Third grade? Second grade? Fourth grade? Okay. Fifth grade? Sixth grade? Seventh grade? Ooh. Eighth grade? Ninth grade, tenth grade, oh wow, eleventh grade, way past any grade. <laughs> well, thanks for being here. Um, I have prepared this for educators primarily, but I'm going to skip through and I'm going to highlight some pieces that I think are important for you as parents. Okay, and for the young folks, we're going to we're going to bump up the presentation a little bit so you have some time to play. Okay. So this is about using STEM. Does anybody know what STEM is? Parents, students? Go ahead, just shout it out. Science, technology, engineering, math. Oh, well, I've done that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> start playing with robots. No, that's excellent. Um, do you know why it's important? Does anybody have an idea why it's important? Yes, go ahead. Isn't it um, that you use it every day? OK, use it every day. Any other ideas? Yes? It could be very well used for your job. For your job? Well, let me start by saying that STEM is a, an acronym that is very popular in education today. Okay, And there are lots of things when the parents were in school, there were probably other things that teachers said, this is really important, you're going to need this, right? And sometimes there was question about, well, this is the latest fad. Right, right, right. Um, so whether STEM, whether you continue here about STEM in your classrooms or not, come on in. It isn't important. What's important is that we understand the underlying message. And the underlying message is that in the United States right now, we're in a crisis. And we're in a crisis because we need skilled laborers. Okay? And when we talk about laborers, people often imagine people getting in their car and going to a dirty old factory and standing by a machine and waiting for the machine to mess up. Okay? And the truth is, those days are gone. They've actually been gone for many, many years. The workforce today requires people that can think, people that can solve problems, people that can come up with new ideas. And there's lots and lots of examples that I'll give you as I go through this where we need young people like you to go, you know what, that's exciting, and the things that I'm learning in school, I can use in my future. And one of the things that's different for you folks than my generation is that technology and knowledge is moving so quickly that if I told you, if you're in eighth grade, by the time you graduate, there'll be jobs that we haven't even thought of. And if you're in second grade, there'll be jobs that the folks that graduate in four years, there'll be jobs that they didn't even think about. That's how fast and quickly technology is changing our lives. Right now, by the year about 2030, 2020, somewhere in there, we'll need over 30 million engineers and technicians. 30 million engineers and technicians. So there's a huge, come on in, folks. There's a huge demand for skilled technical labor. Now, you folks are really lucky because you're getting in on the ground floor of robotics. When my generation talked about robotics, they were simple machines that did simple operations. They would move a part in and pull a part out. They would weld. They, they might lift something and then position it and set it down. But your generation is going to have to develop robots that make for themselves. I saw a presentation the other day where they have a robot that can pick up what's called a pallet, a wooden pallet, and 
secure it. Identify where it goes and then drive to the factory and position it on another pallet. You do it without any operator damage. Does anybody know anything about the Google car? What is that? Somebody tell me what that is. Uh, it's a car that is driven by an AI system on a coordinated route until it arrives at some of the destination. Okay. So you just tell it where you want it to go and it figures out the path, right? And in fact, I believe it's in Utah. They actually have Utah, no, it's Nevada. In Nevada, they actually have those vehicles licensable. So which means that you can buy a license plate that says this is an autonomous vehicle. Probably most people are like, don't follow that too close. We're not sure what it's going to do. But it can, you can tell it where you want it to go and it'll get you there. Okay. So uh, really exciting time when we talk about robotics. Really an exciting time when we talk about autonomy. Now, does anybody know what the word autonomy means before I go too far? Yes? Autonomy means movement or something else. Okay. <laughs> That's a great start. Somebody want to finish it? Add their two cents worth? Yes? Is it the... Like, for like vehicles? Vehicles, robots, yes. A, a movement without a human piloting it just automatically without someone. Yes, autonomy. And you know why you're going to school? Anybody know why? It's connected to autonomy. Why would you want to go to school? So you can be autonomous in life. Right? You can make your own decisions. You can chart your own path. You can go where you want to go. You can have work that gives you independence and free choice. So when we talk about autonomous robots, we also are talking about your future in terms of the kinds of education that you engage in. Because if you are able to match the set that employers will need for skills, you will have a time. You'll be able to chart your path. Hey, I want to live where it's warm. Great. You have the skills, you can build it. Hey, I'd like to have a nice car. You know what? You can buy that. So the knowledge that you learn from this, from math, science, engineering, and te technology, will give you that autonomy that will allow you to make some really great life choices. All right, so let's work just a little bit about me. I'm really old. In fact, I'm so old that we didn't have trees, all I could do was play kick the dirt. <laughs> That's how old I am. But I also have a lot of experience, and I teach Project Lead the Way along with Alternative Energy and Robotics. And for the parents in the room, I'll have some information you can take with you. If you have students that will be attending the Jackson Career Center, or your local high school or middle school, they may have some PLDW programs. I'm not going to focus a lot on that. But you want to keep that in mind because it has a lot of components for STEM that will help your students engage in STEM like that. Okay. Um, I'm from the Lone Way Tech Center, um, and this is my principal. I have to call her out. She, she's, she came here just to see me. And this is, you want to stand up and introduce yourself? Me? Yeah, you know, like, <laughs> really? <Not> me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm Shelly Jusick, so obviously I'm the principal of the LASD Tech Center. <laughs> so welcome to the <laughs> And I owe you a coffee and a roll. You are in trouble. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of trouble. Okay, so I've been there for 21 years. Uh, like I said, I'm old. We have over 21 programs there, um, a variety of programs. We have healthcare programs, we have a collision program, an auto program, we have a CAD program. Um, we have um, my program, just a countless list of programs. We also have programs where students can do less than class size. So we have students enrolled in becoming a veterinarian assistant. We also work with the Jackson Community College here. So the classes that you attend, you can earn college credit, which is great for the parents, right? Because it's like, wow, you know, that's worth quite a bit of money. All right, so what do we do? Well, we do two basic things while we're there. The first overriding one is engineering. So when we talk about STEM, we say science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. What we're looking at is primarily engineering. What is engineering? Yes? Like, um, basically, uh, like robotics and um, making things really that all the technology and stuff that we use. Okay, yes? So, pretty much the 
Okay. They solve problems. Solve problems. Technology is a robotic thing that moves when you do a command or what you need to say to it. Okay, thank you. Do you know where the engineer, the word engineer came from? Anybody? Yes, sir. Engine. Engine? How about um, you? A person that works on a thing that runs basically like cars and such. Okay. Actually started in the Middle Ages. And they were called engineers, which means ingenuity. And they were the people that were responsible to report to the king and say, if we have a siege weapon, you know what a siege weapon is? Like a trebuchet or a catapult? They would bring the engineer with them, and the engineer would look at the resources and say, OK, we need to build a trebuchet for the king. And it has to work, because we're going to storm this castle. Right, so that's where it came from. It actually came from solving problems on the spot using local resources. And over time, it's kind of been transferred into engineering. And if I asked students 20 years ago what an engineer was, they would say they're the person that runs the train. Okay? So your generation understands a different perspective on that. So we do engineering, which is really just solving problems. That's all engineers do, from the clothes that you wear, the food that you eat. Okay. Practically every opportunity, everything you do has been touched by an engineer. And that's a male or female, so an engineer isn't, doesn't have a gender. We also deal with alternative energy, and in particular we want to look at things that are sustainable. I'm not going to go into it too much, but we're running out of oil, fossil fuels, and so we need to start looking at other things. And if anybody read the news yesterday, they might have slept a little bit hard. Anybody read the news about CO2? No? The CO2 levels on the planet Earth are higher now than they've been in over two to four million years. And that's, while it's not everything man-made, we're having a significant impact on our environment. So we need to start thinking about, oh, when I do that, what does that do to my environment around me? Okay, so that's why we have the alternative energy piece. The other piece, which is probably going to be really exciting for most of you is robotics. But if we're going to use robots, we need a source of energy. So why would we want to design robots that are friendly to the environment? Right? They're sustainable. And why not design a robot that can provide its own power? How many have cell phones? What's the last thing you do every day? <laughs> plug it in, right? Because if you don't plug it in, it's worthless. It's a brick. Okay? So they're actually in third world companies or countries right now developing cell phones that have solar panels on because power is a real problem in the third world. All right. We also have, if you get over to Lenaway County on Tipton Highway, we have uh, a center that we're uh, dedicating on the 10th of June that is completely powered by the sun. So students that attend the tech center can also kind of get an idea, well, what would that be like? What do you really need so that you can power a building just by the sun? Yes, sir? Um, well, I was thinking that like, one of the energy things that, we, that scientists are trying to work on it is, uh, is nuclear fission, where it's a few, or I mean, nuclear fusion, where it fuses wa water particles, which makes uh, helium. And my mom said that apparently we're low on helium, so that'll be a really good thing. So we need people to solve that problem, right? Mm -hmm. So anybody ready to start working on that? All right, STEM, there are lots of people that are involved in STEM. Both NASA's involved in this, uh, Project Lead the Way, uh, the National Science Administration. <laughs> STEM is everywhere, okay? Whether we want to call it STEM or not, it's everywhere. Yes, sir? Um, I did Project Lead the Way in my school. Did you? What did you do there? Um, we went and made chubby shays. Oh, good. So we could throw rocks, right? Yeah. <laughs> most, most young people like things that <laughs> crash and bash, right? Yeah. Well, the robots we're building are not supposed to do that. Um, one of the other things, anybody here artistic? Okay, anybody that likes to draw or play music? All right, and the other one that you might hear is steam, okay? And we put the art in STEM. And I like to say that one of the things that engineers do is we put the smart in art, okay? And if you have any Apple products, one of the things that they're best known for 
is that they have something that we call, as an engineer, form and function. So not only does it look good and it feels good in your hands and it's easy to use, but it also works. So we need artists. We need creative people. And so when I talk about engineering, I talk about engineers put the smart in the art, okay? Because we not only want things that look pretty, but we want them to work. So we need everybody, all right? So if you're autistic, that doesn't mean that you can't be an engineer. In fact, people that are artisans can be really helpful to engineers because they make it um, friendly to human beings or animals or the environment. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna whip through this. But there, um, let me just bring it back here. Um, Project Lead the Way has a lot of different areas. So mom and dads that are in the room, it has a lot of different areas that can help your son or daughter with the idea of engineering. Okay, and you can go online to pltw.org. pltw.org. And they have both high school and middle school programs. And I would encourage you, especially because we have a lot of young people in here, um, parents look at the middle school programs. Um, there's a lot of research that says right now that when students get to about the eighth grade, their interest in math and science starts to drop off radically. And that doesn't mean that kids like, you know, something happens in their cereal and they just, they just lose it. It's probably because they're not being engaged. And so as a parent, you can be an advocate for your child and say, you know what, I want programs that let my students, my sons and daughters, engage in building things and solving problems. Okay, and they're also developing a program um, this, I believe, is out of the East Coast. It's called Engineering is Elementary for two-year-olds. And Project Lead the Way is going to be supporting that this summer. Okay. They also cover biomedical. And there's a lot of work that's being done in the biomedical field around engineering. I'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. Okay, so what is a career center? So for those of you that are in eighth grade, you're going to be looking in a couple of years at maybe the Jackson Career Center or something like that. We're very similar in that. We provide career exploration. So I really like to draw. What are the possible jobs? I really like to make things. What are possible? I really like to destroy things. What are possible jobs? Okay. Um, but we need to know what those are because the truth is, more often than not, when I see students, they say, why did you come to the tech center? They go, well, because a friend of mine. Or... I have an uncle that's an electrician and he says it's a really good job. And yes, it is a good job, but is it a good job for you? I don't know. Well, it's your future. Yes, sir. Um, I'm doing a thing online called Career Cruising, where you go and answer questions about like what you want to do in a career, and it gives you choices of what good careers might be for you. And I would encourage you to do that. And I would encourage you to encourage your friends to do that. And ask questions. And if you know somebody or your family knows somebody that is in a field that you're interested, see if you can go follow them for a day. Okay? Because more often than not, again, I say, well, what do they do? And they're like, I don't know. They just make a lot of money. Well, money's great. But if you get up every morning and you don't want to do it, then the money's not so great. Okay? So, and you guys have the perfect opportunity. You have between eight, what, eight years, six years, to start thinking about what am I going to do after high school? Okay, and that brings us to the next one, which is we should be looking at things like what do we do after high school? Trade school, that could be a, a one year, a two year program, a two year college, like the Jackson Community College or a four year degree. So we want to think about, and your age, your generation in particular, if we're going to be employable, we have to go beyond high school. High school is kind of like taste testing. It's like the buffet. I try different things and it's like, oh man, I really like that. So then we need to go on for additional training because technology keeps asking more of us. And it's asking less of us physically and more of us mentally. So the more education we get, the more opportunity we have, the more autonomy we have. Okay, so I'm going to pass through this. Um, and notice that we do middle school programs, and this is through Project Lead the Way. Um, and you can see here design and modeling, so that's where you use a computer and you make things in a 3D CAD program, and I'll talk about that in a moment. Automation robotics, you actually talk about how do I program computers and make things, systems do things. Um, flight in space and magic and electrons. Flight in space, you would imagine what? 
rockets and airplanes, right? Magic of electrons, electricity, those kinds of things. Okay, we have high school programs. I'm just going to roll through this really quick. Now, this is something that I believe Jackson has. Um, but this is, again, something as a parent, I would encourage you to talk to your local school programs or the career center here. One of the things that we offer during the summer, and it can be one week or two week, are career exploration programs. So gateway to engineering students come in and they act like engineers. And we built uh, solar ovens, we built uh, like a, a t-shirt launcher out of PVC, we built a little uh, electric car, those kinds of things, and it allows students the opportunity to kind of go, is this something I'd like to do? Because a big part of life and a big part of education is identifying what you're good at. And if there are things you struggle with, okay, is that something that I can conquer? Is it something that I'm willing to engage myself in? Okay. Because when you get to high school, you really should be on that path like, I really want to do something. I call it the fire truck syndrome. This you know, young person sitting in the front yard and the fire truck goes by. And they're like, oh, that's wonderful. I love the sound and the, you know, the colors and all the stuff that they do. And so at an early age, they, they say, I'm going to be a fireman. So the rest of their education career, they're always looking for things that will make them a better fireman. And that's what education should be for you, is what is it that I want to do? And now that I'm in school, if I want to be an engineer, I want to be an astronaut, I want to be a fireman, whatever it is, what are those skills that will help me be a better one? So we offer banners not included, and that's, that's the alternative energy. We made solar ovens, we made solar tracking kinds of things, um, engineering academy. That's for the 8th to 10th grade, it's very similar to the 6th to 8th. And then underwater robots. We actually take some PVC tubing and we make a robot and we take it to a pool and you drive it around. Okay? And those are all things that help you say, yes, I really like this. Okay? Now, let's get to the real fun part. All right, so what you see here, these are autonomous robots. And we talked about autonomous means what? Doesn't need any humans, okay? So I can turn this on, and Kyle help me set this up. And this has edge detection, we'll see if it works. Oh, all right. So what it's doing is it's sensing that black area as an edge. And it's basically given a behavioral instruction that says, go for it, explore. Okay, really simple behavior. When we talk about autonomous, that's what we do, right? When you go to the mall, what's the first thing you do? Let's look around, right? So that's sort of that, that basic directive, which is let's explore our surroundings. So that's kind of how we start this, is we go, you know, we want a robot that we can give basic instruction to, and it can navigate its environment. So if there's an obstacle, we want it to avoid that obstacle. We don't want it to hit that, okay? And how does that play into STEM? Well, we can talk about materials. What would you make a robot out of? Wires. Wires? I'm sorry, Cliff? Wires, batteries, and metal. Metal? Yes. Plastic. Plastic? Go ahead. Um, Just shout it out. Silicon? Electric Yep. All kinds of stuff. And when we talk about a robot, this is what I like about it. And this is kind of where I started with my students. I want to give them an opportunity to, to build different things so they can go, oh, I really like that part. Okay? So if we look at these wheels, these wheels were designed on a 3D CAD program. So students that like CAD, it's like, oh, I really like the CAD part. Okay? So they have that opportunity. Um, we look at the shape of this. So people are like, well, you know, I don't mind making up wheels, but I really like the idea of designing things that look a certain shape. Okay. Other students are like, well, you know, that CAD is okay, but I like the electronics, the wires. And then I have other students that's like, you know, I'm not really into making the mechanical or electrical stuff. I like programming. So they get three things. They get the mechanical, they get electrical, and then this is actually a little computer chip. So then you get the program. And maybe one or several of those things in there are like, yeah, I really like that. And robots, and robotics in particular, is not necessarily just one thing. Lawrence Technical University, which is in south of Michigan, they have a robotics program there. And the guy says, you're not an expert in anything. But you know enough about different pieces 
because that's what it takes to make a robot. And if you've seen flying robots, they also need to understand aeronautics. So, and if you're, you want to be a doctor, you want to build a robot to help a surgeon do surgery, you have to understand biomechanics. So, one of the advantages of the robot is less about it as it's working, but more about there are a lot of different things you can learn, and maybe one of those things is the thing that you decide you want to do as a career. Okay? And the future is bright for robotics. The United States right now is the world's leader in autonomous vehicles. So vehicles that operate on their own. They're also the world's leader in remotely piloted vehicles. Okay. So, and that requires a competitive edge. It requires really bright people to do those things. Did you have a question? Yes. But weapons, the weapons someone, like if it's autonomous, weapons someone from that we don't want to control it gets to be able to control. Okay, well that's a problem that has to be solved, right? How do you do that? And that's why you folks have the opportunity to start thinking about it. One of the things that's going to happen in your future is like we look at the autonomous cars, is how about the legal implications? One of my students says, well, what happens if two autonomous vehicles are involved in a car crash? Who gets the citation? You're going to give the robot a citation? Bad robot. <laughs> Didn't stop. Right? Well, that's a legal question. And your generation is going to have to deal with those kinds of things. Because it's here. It's not science fiction. It's science fact. So another area that engineers have to struggle with is sometimes it's not an issue, can I do it? It's an issue of, should I do it? And if I do it, what's, what effect is it going to have on society at large? What happened before cell phones? Yes? Telephone. Telephone. Sorry? Mail. Yeah. Mail. Okay. Yes? Like, just messengers. Messengers, right. So my generation, oh, you didn't call me back. You know, we wait a week, two weeks. You didn't write me, right? You wait a month. Now, if you don't call me back, what's wrong? You don't like me, right? I texted you. You should drop everything and text me back. Okay, so the time frame in which things happen has been shortened. <coughs> And so that's one of the things that's happened with technology is that your generation is used to immediate feedback. Ours wasn't. Well, engineers weren't thinking about that when they designed cell phones. Just people want to talk to each other. They want to text each other. They want to send pictures and audio and all kinds of things. They weren't thinking about, oh, gee, you know what? This could be a problem. Somebody's texting while driving. Okay. So one of the things that your generation is going to have to work with is because we can do it doesn't mean necessarily we should do it. Or if we do it, maybe we ought to build in safeguards. So when we talk about these little guys, okay, when they mess up, they're like a rabbit chihuahua. You know, they're chewing on your ankles. But if you can imagine something the size of a car and it went wild, bad things could happen, right? Um, Chevy makes the GM the Volt. You know what the Volt is? What is it? Someone tell me what it is. Yes? Electric power car. Electric power car. Do you know you can't hear it when it comes in the parking lot? Mm -hmm. And so BMW actually, this is what I think is funny, this is one of the things an engineer got paid to do this. They designed a sound system that makes the car sound like a regular car. Now what a great job, right? Okay. And the idea is so that when the electric vehicle is in the parking lot, you can hear it. It's like the baseball card in the Bicycle exactly, right? <laughs> but see, that was an unintended, of the te un unintended consequence of the technology was that it's like, oh, wow, you know what? I never imagined that this car would be so quiet that, you know, people pushing the shopping cart wouldn't notice it was there. Okay. So there are lots of problems that come out of new technology that we don't even think about. So there will be lots of opportunities for you, the artistic person, right? Maybe there's certain colors I should paint robots so that everybody knows it's a robot. Things like that you know, that, that we don't often think about. Okay, so let me, let me, because I want to get these out. I want you the young people to come up here and play. So let me just move on here. So the science part is we talk about materials, the scientific method. Anybody know what the scientific method is? Yeah. Yes. Um, it's a process that you follow. You make an observation from that observation and you come up with a hypothesis, you test the hypothesis, and then you accept or reject our conclusions, and then you go back and do the Right. The scientific method 
um, is something that's been around for a long time. And engineers have modified that slightly. And engineers, one of the problems that engineers have is they don't like things to stay the same. They're kind of, they have this, this ongoing mindset, well, if I made this one work, then I can make the next one even better. So one of the things that engineers do is they take the scientific method and then they kind of close the loop and they really require that you do it several times. Okay. Um, physics, study of motion, materials. If you look at these wheels, I didn't bring it, but I have uh, several robots the students made that have really big wheels. Now they go really fast, but they wobble. Okay. So one of the problems with design is you have to know the limits of the material strength and you have to understand that there's mass and momentum. So the ones with the large wheels have a tendency to kind of flip over when they hit things. Okay. Um, technology, if you like computers, you like graphics programs, you like the idea that you can make something on your own, um, you young folks are in a great, great place. You can buy something called a 3D printer and I'm going to pass this around. This was made on a 3D printer. Okay, you can take a look at that. It starts out, this looks like weed whacker material. It starts out like this, and it melts it, and it spits it in really tiny threads and layers it over and over again. So that wheel that I'm passing around takes about six hours to make. But you can buy a 3D printer now for less than $500. And probably within the next year or so, there'll be 3D printers for under $300. And we talk about music, right? And it's copyright protected. You guys know what I'm talking about? Because none of you download anything that's illegal, right? No. Okay, that's what I thought you said. They're talking now about providing the same kind of protection systems on those files that create the 3D parts. And the idea is that you want a cover for your iPad or your cell phone, you'll be able to go on to Amazon, download the part file, and then print it at home. Okay? So again, another unintended consequence of this new technology is, oh gee, you know, I never thought that people would want to make stuff at home. And in particular, if they did, how are we going to protect that intellectual property for the person that spent a lot of time designing that plastic part? Okay. So, um, lots and lots of stuff going on, and trust me, probably in your future, and probably not too far in the future, a 3D printer will be just like a regular printer that you have at home. Yes, sir? Um, apparently, there are, apparently, since you, if you get a 3D printer, um, people, I saw a video thing that where a person was making guns out of a 3D printer, now, is that an unintended consequence of a new technology? Yeah, just, I mean, technology can be used for good or evil. It can be used appropriately or inappropriately. Okay, and the human factor is how do we use that? Okay, because the machine doesn't care. It doesn't know what the end point is. Now, these uh, were created using another process that's sort of more traditional manufacturing. It's called subtractive manufacturing. This was made with something called a CNC machine. It actually has a bit that moves around and it removes material. Now, this is something that your generation will have to work on. This is sort of a traditional manufacturing process. Now, this is not an ideal application, but about 80 to 90 percent of the material was removed from this. It started out like this. So it took a lot of energy to make this first, and then material was removed. Okay. So if we look at the environmental impact, we can recycle that, but we spend a lot of time and energy creating that part just to remove sections of it. Okay. Those plastic pieces that are going around the room, you start with that threaded material and basically you build just the parts that you need. And, um, let's see if I brought some, I don't think I did. There is two different types of plastic that are commonly used. That's ABS, the same kind of plastic that you would see on car door panels but they make another material called PLA that's made out of cornstarch. And that doesn't mean you can eat it, but um, it's environmentally friendly. You can grow the plastic. So one of the things that your generation will have to start looking at is what are the materials I'm using, and is it a material that I can recycle, I can reuse, or I can replace? Okay, so let's move on. Engineering. That's the problem solving piece. Yes, sir? Um, for the guns, wouldn't they melt if you tried shooting them? Um, well, they're high temperature plastics, but the bigger question is, how do we 
deal with the development of machines that potentially can cause harm. Okay. Um, because we're not going to stop people from making things and inventing things. Um, but the bigger question is how do we school people in just because you can do it doesn't necessarily mean you should do it. And there's a really great example. We look at 3D printers. They're developing 3D printers now to create human organs. They've already created an artificial pancreas. Uh, I saw a report about a month ago where, and, and just think about this for a moment, um, the people in the medical field, if you have an injury, they create what's called a scaffolding. So it's a material that's friendly to your biology that cells can grow on. Okay, and sometimes that scaffolding is absorbed by the body, sometimes it remains there. But they replaced 75%, so think about this, 75% of a person's skull using a 3D th uh, printer. Okay, 75% of a person's skull using a 3D printer. Okay, with the scaffolding material. And so the idea of, of organ replacements, the idea of plastic surgery or of some type of enhancement, isn't science fiction, it's science fact, and it's just a matter of time before we see that as a commonplace. Yes, sir? So we're able to make prosthetic limbs now because yeah. of the Yes, they're making uh, artificial hips and knees um, with a 3D printing process, and the advantage of that is that I can take something called a 3D scanner, scan the opposite side, use a computer program to reverse it, and make a compatible part for the other side. Where the traditional way is I have like this tinker toy set of different sized pieces and parts and I screw them together and clip them together. And so they may not be a perfect match for our biology, but it's a workable mechanism. They're now working on systems to allow you just to take a piece that already exists, model it, and then create the, the counterpart to that so that it looks and acts just like your own organs. Okay, and then we talk about applied science and again, sustainable kinds of things that we can do. And then mathematics is in all of this. Lots and lots of math. And I want you to notice something here. Um, can everybody see this down here? Okay. Anybody notice anything about these pictures? This is actually comes from Microsoft, their clip art collection. Einstein. Okay. What else? Anything else? Right. Look at this young man. Yeah. Notice. Everything's a little odd here. Why is that? Why would we want people to think that math is odd, right? Math is hard. See those? And that's one of the things that, that I think we as adults have to work on, is that a lot of our media portrays people that are in science or engineering or technology and mathematics as being different. And the truth is they're not. They're everyday people. And so one of the things we have to work on and I, and I would challenge the adults in the room, is help not only your children, but the people around you in your neighborhood. When somebody says, oh, I hated math, just ask them a question. Did you hate math because you never had a good experience with it? Because that's when I talk to my students, nine times out of 10, it isn't that they can't do math, it's they just never had a positive experience with it. And so one of the things that I work on every day is showing them how math can be a tool that allows them to make great things like this. Okay. And without math, these things don't happen. So the challenge here is to help you all understand that math is an important part of your future, and it can be fun because it allows us to do some really incredible things. OK. Um, and I'm going to stop here in a moment. If we look at the reason we did this is for you folks, the young folks in the room. If you see yourself in this, if you see yourself doing this, then you naturally want it, right? My students say robots are cool. Well, if it's cool, then it's not a problem to try it, right? If somebody's stand, standing there, a friendly adult standing there, you know what, don't worry about it. We'll make sure you get it done. Okay? Then you're not afraid to try it, right? And most of young people are pretty fearless as it is, right? Did you figure out the cell phone before mom and dad did? <laughs> <laughs> right, because you don't, you know, nobody does. <coughs> All right, so with that, I'm going to stop. But um, young people, come on up. And we've got some robots up here and let you play with them.
Yeah. <laughs> yeah.